In chapter 4, verse 4 of our last video, God questioned Jonah's anger over the decision not to destroy Nineveh. Is it right for you to be so angry over this? Well, God is still trying to lead Jonah to a better place, and he wants to show him that there's a better emotion than anger, and that emotion is compassion. And uh, that's what we see here in our last message as we finish the final verses of Jonah. Jonah chapter 4, verse 5, we read that Jonah went out to the east side of the city and made a shelter to sit under as he waited to see what would happen to the city. I imagine Jonah went out well out of range of thunderbolts and balls of fire and set up a little camp for himself, got a little camp chair, and sat there and waited to see what would happen, hoping that God would reverse his decision and decide to have a big fireworks party, uh, turning Jonah, uh, Nineveh into a big ball of fire. As he sits there waiting for that to happen, uh, God displays what I think is a tremendous sense of humor uh, with the series of events that happens next. And I'll just let me just summarize what happens in verses 6 through 8. So it's hot outside. It's, it's extremely hot, uh, as it is in modern-day Iraq still to this day. It's very hot. And so God sends Jonah a plant to sit underneath to get shade. And this shade makes Jonah happy. So he sits there in the shade, happy for a day. And the next day, God takes that plant away, and he replaces it with a burning hot sun and scorching winds. This makes Jonah angry and miserable again. So now God repeats his question from verse 4. Then God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry because the plant died? Yes, Jonah retorted, even angry enough to, jo to die. Even angry enough to die. So Jonah tries to defend his anger here, which of course is something that we all do. I've tried to do it. You try to do it with God. Um, it's fine that we try to do it. It probably doesn't ever do us any good. But God is loving and patient enough to listen to our frustrations. But he's also powerful and wise enough to try to lead us to a better place and to make us stronger as a result of the storms that we're going through. And that's what he's continuing to do with Jonah here. As we read on, verse 10, Then the Lord said, You have compassion over the plant, though you did nothing to put it there. It came quickly and died quickly. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness. Not to mention all the animals. Shouldn't I have compassion for such a great city? I love that we have a God who even sees the animals, right? Shouldn't I care about the chickens? Like the chickens are there. I don't want to burn up the chickens. Shouldn't I care about all that? I know the word that I want you to focus on here is compassion. It's an extremely remarkable word. It's not found anywhere else in ancient literature outside the Bible. Uh, no word existed to convey the depth of emotion uh, that was needed. And so the writers of the Bible made a word up, and that word they made up is compassion. Compassion literally means to link your heart to someone else's, to attach them, so that you feel what they feel. When they have joy, it brings you joy. Sincere, not fabricated, but real joy. And when they're in pain, you're in pain and it hurts you. When they grieve, you grieve. When they have sorrow, you have sorrow. Because through compassion, your hearts are linked together. Now as humans, we're pretty good at detaching ourselves from people, especially when we don't like them and they're in trouble. We say things like, well, serves you right, right? Or you got what you had coming to you. Of course, that's hard to do when we're close to people. The closer you get to someone, the more natural it is for you to feel compassion for them. We don't say things like, well, it serves you right, even if it does. We say things like, I hate that you're going through this. And if it's someone who's extremely close to you, even if they completely deserve what they're in the middle of, it hurts us to see people we love going through times of difficulty. That is why the end of this book is so extraordinary. Because this is the God of the universe saying that he has compassion for you. His heart is attached the human beings. Please tune in. Please hear me on this. I'm almost done. I need you to see this. The entire universe is smaller than a, a piece of lint to the God of the universe, the creator of the universe, and all of his majesty and, and grandeur and, and size and magnificence. The entire universe is nothing but a, a small piece of lint to him. And you and I are smaller than a piece of lint on that piece of lint. Yet God from his throne in heaven says, my heart is attached to yours because I want it to be. And when you hurt, I hurt. When you have pain, I have pain. More than anything else from the book of Jonah, I want you to see that this is how God sees you. He pursues you and he runs after you because his heart is attached to your heart. Your sadness and your pain bring him sadness and pain. That, that's the point of this book. The point of the book is not about a fish. It's not about Jonah. 
The point of the book is about a God who pursues people. That's the point of the entire Bible, that God loves us enough to chase after us. And if you want to know what that looks like, for God to chase after people, you need to look at the person and the work of Jesus Christ. That's what it looks like to see God chasing after people. Jesus sacrificed himself to run after people like you and people like me. People who are constantly looking for boats going the wrong direction. Knowing that, he still stepped down into our world to pursue us. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36 says, When he, meaning Jesus, saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. That compassion is still driving Jesus to pursue you and pursue me today. So if you're running from God, consider stopping. If you're in the middle of a storm, stop rowing. Instead, turn to Jesus and give him a chance to either calm the storm for you or carry you through it. Thanks and God bless.